Hi everyone, this is Srinivas. In today's demonstration, we'll talk about Bring Your Own License and its support on ServiceNow Sampro. So let's get started. Before understanding how ServiceNow Sampro supports Bring Your Own License, let's understand the different licensing rules for Microsoft products as well as Oracle products on their deployments in AWS and Azure. Notice, for example, Windows Server has got different licensing rules for AWS and Azure. Also, there are different licensing rules when software assurance is enabled versus when it's not enabled. For example, you can notice here that for uh, Windows Server deployment on AWS shared tenancy host, BYOL is not allowed when software assurance is enabled or when it's not enabled. This is because Windows Server does not have license mobility rights. This is an important licensing rule. Another licensing rule states that Windows Server Data Center allows dual use rights when software assurance with Azure Hybrid Benefit is enabled. There's also addition flexibility which states that Windows Server standard licenses can license the Windows Server Data Center installs on Microsoft Azure. Notice that these rules are only with software assurance. When software assurance is not enabled, these benefits that are enabled for Azure are not applicable anymore. Also notice that there are licensing rules for dedicated host. One of the main licensing rules, which was effective on 1st October 2019 states that BVL is not allowed for purchases made after 1st October 2019. This is for AWS dedicated. So you can see that there are different li licensing rules uh, which need to be determined correctly to determine the correct license compliance position. Let's go to SQL Server. Again, notice that there are different licensing rules for AWS and Azure shared versus dedicated host. In here, notice that for AWS shared with software assurance, BYOL is allowed. This is because SQL Server has got license mobility rights. However, if software assurance is not enabled, BYOL is also not allowed. Notice that for Microsoft SQL Server deployments on Azure, when there is software assurance enabled and Azure Hybrid Benefit is enabled, there are certain benefits. For example, there is a benefit for addition flexibility which states that one SQL Server enterprise on-prem can cover for four SQL Server standard on Azure. These are some of the benefits that you get when uh, you deploy SQL Server on Azure shared tenancy host. As you can notice that there are different licensing rules on dedicated host as well. As we just spoke about dedicated host, there is a recent licensing change uh, from Microsoft, which is effective from 1st August 2019, which states that if you have purchased licenses after 1st October 2019 without software assurance, and mobility rights, they cannot be deployed on dedicated hosted cloud services offered by the following cloud providers, Microsoft, Alibaba, Amazon, and Google. They will be referred to as listed providers. So you can see that, you know, there are different licensing rules for dedicated host, as well as shared tenancy host on Azure, as well as AWS. Now, when we come to Oracle DB server, the rules are totally different. You can see that for AWS and Azure, the core factor table is not required. Also notice that there are certain size limitations. For example, uh, standard edition two can be run on a VM with not more than eight vCPU cores. If I go ahead, I can see that there are different licensing rules for options and packs as well. For example, Oracle RAC or real application cluster 
is not authorized on the cloud providers unless it's Oracle Cloud. So you can notice that there are different licensing rules for named user licenses and ULA, multi AZ deployments, and so on. And these need to be respected so that the correct license compliance position can be uh, gathered. All right, so let's move to uh, the demonstration. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, some use cases here. So in this use case, we have got SQL Server deployed uh, on a shared tenancy dedicated host tenancy across AWS and Azure. And uh, the VMs will consume rights as per the licensing rules. And we talked about some of the optimization benefits, for example, addition flexibility benefit, uh, unlimited virtualization benefit, and so on. These will be auto applied by ServiceNow Sample. In another use case, we have got Windows Server and it's deployed across uh, it, uh, AWS dedicated host, as well as shared host, as well as Azure shared and dedicated host. And here again, uh, all the licensing rules are applied and um, uh, benefits such as uh, addition flexibility and dual use rights are applied. And also, uh, as we just, uh, just saw that VWL is not allowed uh, for Windows Server deployments on uh, AWS dedicated host if the purchase date is greater than 1st October 2019. Also, VWL is not allowed when Windows Server is deployed on AWS or um, shared or, de uh, or dedicated tenancy host as it does not have uh, license mobility rights. So these are some of the uh, rules that we'll check in the demo. I've got another use case for Oracle DB server, and it's also about Oracle DB deployments across AWS, which includes both IAS and PaaS. PaaS is AWS RDS, as well as the AWS uh, 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 Oracle deployments on uh, Microsoft Azure and on-prem. So all these licensing rules will be combined together and an effective license compliance position can be determined accurately on ServiceNow sample. So let's get started. So I've logged in as a, a SAM manager and I've gone into the Microsoft license workbench. The first thing I notice is that I can see the Microsoft products across hybrid environments, which gives me the installations of all Microsoft products across on-prem, Azure and AWS. I can see the license types a be, be it bring your own license or license included across both AWS and Azure. I can click on, on these charts and drill down to see the exact uh, resources uh, or the installs having uh, those license types. Now, as a use case was about SQL Server first, uh, let's deep dive into that. So I'm going to SQL Server 2017 Enterprise. And I can notice that uh, I can see the license metric results, which is uh, showing me that 130 licenses are owned and about 108 licenses are required. That means I'm compliant. I can drill down into the license required section and see all the resources consuming license. I can see that uh, there is Azure shared tenancy hosts which are consuming license. There is an Azure dedicated host that is consuming license. And there is an AWS dedicated host that is consuming license. I can see that um, the dedicated host uh, uh, is uh, consuming 32 rights and uh, AWS dedicated host is consuming 36 rights. And this is also uh, an Azure benefit that is applied for dedicated host. Moving on, I can see that uh, uh, this VM is a 16 core VM, as, uh, but it is still consuming just four writes. And this is because of addition flexibility. I can notice the number of cores here. I can see that it's a 16 core machine 
having SQL Server standard installed. And uh, I can go to the Cloud Special Rights section to determine that if any special right was applied for the same. And I can notice that although it's a 16 core VM, only four core rights got applied. And this is because of uh, addition flexibility, which is an Azure hybrid benefit uh, applicable only for uh, deployments of SQL Server on Microsoft Azure when software assurance is enabled. So you can notice that ServiceNow Sampro can automatically apply these optimization benefits. All right, so let's move to another use case. In here, we'll talk about Windows Server and I'll go to Windows Server 2012. And I can notice that a removal candidate got automatically generated. And let's see what this removal candidate is about. Notice that uh, this is a deployment of Windows Server on AWS shared environment. And what ServiceNow is telling you that it is an unlicensed install because Windows Server does not have license mobility benefits. And hence it cannot be deployed on AWS shared environment if you have software assurance or if you do not have software assurance. Hence your advice to decommission the virtual machine. So you can notice that, you know, this is a risk for organizations and ServiceNow is automatically uh, creating removal candidates if it encounters any such installation risk. All right, so let's move to another use case. This time I'll talk about Windows Server 2019 data center. I can uh, go to the entitlements. I can see that it's a, it's a core Cal entitlement with software assurance enabled. And the purchase date is less than 1st October 2019. That means uh, uh, it is a valid install. I can go to the license required section again. I notice uh, the AWS dedicated host consuming license. Now, if the purchase was greater than 1st October 2019, then the AWS dedicated host is not allowed to be deployed. And this is automatically taken care of by ServiceNow Sample. I'll move back and go to the remediation options. So ServiceNow has automatically generated some remediation options. And if I click on remove unlicensed cloud installs, it will start creating removal candidates, which are basically workflows to correct the non-compliance. And ServiceNow SAM, as we just saw, provides enough context to the SAM manager as to why these reclamation candidates are created and uh, what is the action for the same. And this notice that uh, uh, this is a deployment on AWS dedicated host and this is unlicensed because the number of rights are less. However, ServiceNow SAM is pointing out that there is a risk because uh, uh, you will not be allowed to upgrade Windows Server software to versions released or purchased after 1st October 2019. And hence you are stuck here. Therefore, it's advised to decommission the virtual machine or uninstall software. So notice that uh, risk which can happen in the future are also uh, determined by, uh, by ServiceNow SAM Pro and a showcase to the SAM manager so that they can take effective action on the same. So that was about Windows Server as well as SQL Server. Um, there's one more thing which is uh, shown on the progress indicators which is the number of cloud assets covered by BYOL. So if you want to know all your cloud assets covered by BYOL, you can just click on the progress indicator and drill down into that specific chart. All right, so that was about Microsoft. Let's move to Oracle. So I'll move to Oracle here and uh, I'll go to the Oracle database server uh, enterprise edition. I notice here that in a similar manner, 
there are progress indicators for the number of cloud assets covered by BYOL. What is the license types of Oracle DB server across Azure and across AWS? And I could drill down uh, into them. Notice for Oracle DB server for AWS, the past resources are also discovered, including the license type. Now, as I was moving to enterprise, I will move to enterprise and uh, I'll, I'll directly go to the removal section, removal candidate section. And I can see that uh, ServiceNow has automatically generated reclamation candidates for real application cluster. And that is because real application cluster is not authorized to be activated on the AWS data center environment. Hence, it is advised to deactivate this option. Notice here again that uh, ServiceNow is pointing to the license compliance risk that the organization can face if real application cluster is enabled. In a similar manner, ServiceNow SAM creates all these remediation options, optimize vCPU, remove unlicensed installs, et cetera. And if you click on them, it will create uh, removal candidates and those removal candidates will have uh, adequate information as to what, why, why is it a potential risk and what needs to be done to fix it. In this case, uh, you, you have shifted your licenses to the cloud without having adequate on-prem rights. So this is a license compliance risk. In a similar manner, if I move to standard edition two and go to removal candidates and open up the removal candidate for standard edition two, I can see that again, ServiceNow SAM has automatically generated the reclamation candidate here. And this is because Oracle database standard edition two is incorrectly de deployed on a vCPU having size 16. Uh, and we just noticed that the licensing rule states that edition, standard edition two can only be licensed on um, authorized cloud environments having size max up to eight VCP. And hence, this is uh, advised to uninstall the Oracle database standard edition two from this environment. So you can see that um, both for Microsoft as well as Oracle, the framework of licensing remains the same. Um, if the license compliance is correct, license will be consumed. If they are incorrect, then a removal candidate or a remediation option will be created with a workflow so that SAM managers can take adequate action for the same. In addition, we just saw that, you know, you could look at the license types across Azure and AWS and also determine uh, all the cloud assets covered by BYO. Before ending, I'll talk about a few reports uh, which we have introduced. One is the Azure BYL Realized Savings Report. And this report is about the actual savings that the customer has, um, has received if they have enabled Azure Hybrid Benefit. You can see that uh, there is the standard price mentioned, the actual price mentioned, the standard saving realized, and the actual savings realized. So this is a good indicator for organization to remind the actual savings when Azure Hybrid Benefit has been enabled uh, for their deployments on Azure. Another report is the Oracle DB server deployments per agreement. Uh, this is also important because there are significant uh, risk if you have got Oracle deployed uh, on a ULA contract. So this report gives uh, enough information as to um, as to uh, where uh, that Oracle DB server is deployed and what is the agreement type, whether it's generic or it's unlimited license agreement. So these are the two major reports on, uh, on bringing on license for both Windows Server, SQL Server, and Oracle Database Server. So that concludes the demonstration. Thank you.